Hello and welcome back to the reading of the Holy Bible. Today we will be reading Deuteronomy chapters 21, 22, 23, and 24. Chapter 21, Purification After a Secret Murder. When there shall be found in thy land, which the Lord thy God will give thee, the corpse of a man slain, and it is not known who is guilty of the murder, thy ancients and judges shall go out and shall measure from the place where the body lieth the distance of every city round about, and the ancients of that city which they shall perceive, to be nearer than the rest, shall take a heifer of the herd that hath not drawn in the yoke, nor plowed the ground. And they shall bring her into a rough and stony valley that never was plowed nor sown. And there they shall strike off the head of the heifer. And the priests of the sons of Levi shall come, whom the Lord thy God hath chosen to minister to him, and to bless in his name, in that by their word every matter should be decided, and whatsoever is clean or unclean shall be judged. And the ancients of that city shall come to the person slain, and shall wash their hands over the heifer that was killed in the valley, and shall say, Our hands did not shed this blood, nor did our eyes see it. Be merciful to thy people Israel, whom thou hast redeemed, O Lord, and lay not innocent blood to their charge in the midst of thy people Israel, and the guilt of blood shall be taken from them, and thou shalt be free from the innocent's blood that was shed when thou shalt have done what the Lord hath commanded thee. Marriage with a Captive If thou go out to fight against thy enemies, and the Lord thy God deliver them into thy hand, and thou lead them away captives, and seest in the number of the captives a beautiful woman, and lovest her, and wilt have her to wife, thou shalt bring her into thy house, and she shall... Sh Shave her hair, and pare her, pare her nails, and shall put off the raiment wherein she was taken, and shall remain in thy house, and mourn for her father and mother one month. And after that, thou shalt go in into, into her, and shalt sleep with her, and she shall be thy wife. But if afterwards she please thee not, thou shalt let her go free. But thou mayest not sell her for more money, nor oppress her by might, because thou hast humbled her. Birthright of firstborn to be respected. If a man have two wives, one beloved and the other hated, and they have had children by him, and the son of the hated be the firstborn, and he meaneth to divide his substance among his sons, he may not make the son of the beloved the firstborn, and pre and prefer him before the son of the hated. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn, and shall give him a double portion of all he hath, for this is the first of his children, and to him are due the first birthrights. Punishment of an unruly son. If a man have a stubborn and unruly son who will not hear the commandments of his father or mother, and mean correcteth, corrected slighteth obedience, they shall take him and bring him to the ancients of his city, and to the gate of judgment, and shall say to them, This our son is rebellious and stubborn. He slighteth hearing our admonitions, he giveth himself to revealing, re, re, reveling, and to debauchery and banquetings. The people of the city shall stone him, and he shall die, that you may take away the evil out of the midst of you, and all Israel hearing it may be afraid. A hanged man to be buried the same day. When a man hath committed a crime for which he is to be punished with death, and being condemned to die, and is hanged on a gibbet, his body shall not remain upon the tree, but shall be buried the same day. For he is a curse of God that hangeth on a tree, and thou shalt not defile thy land which the Lord thy God shall give thee in possession. <coughs> Chapter 22. Charity to Neighbors. Thou shalt not pass by if thou seest thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray, but thou shalt bring them back to thy brother. And if thy brother be not nigh, or thou know him not, thou shalt bring them to thy house, and they shall be with thee until thy brother seek them and receive them. Thou shalt do in like manner with his ass and with his raiment, and with everything that is thy brother's which is lost, if thou find it, neglect it not as pertaining to another. If thou see thy brother's ass or his ox to be fallen down in the way, thou shalt not slight it, but shall lift it up with him. Neither sex may wear the other's apparel. A woman shall not be clothed with man's apparel, neither shall a man use woman's apparel. For he that doeth these things is ab abominable before God. A bird must not be taken with her young. If thou find, as thou walkest by the way, a bird's nest in a tree, or on the ground, and the dam sitting upon the young, or upon the eggs, thou shalt not take her with her young, but shalt let her go, keeping the young which thou hast caught, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live a long time. Chapter 22, verse 6. Thou shalt not take. 
This was to teach them to exercise a certain mercy even to irrational creatures and to train them up to a horror of cruelty and the exercise of humanity and mutual charity to one another. <coughs> Pardon me. A wall must be built around a new roof. When thou buildest a new house, thou shalt make a battlement to thy roof around about. Lest blood be shed in thy house, and thou be guilty, if any one slip and fall down headlong. Battlement. This precaution was necessary because all their houses had flat tops, and it was usual to walk and to converse together upon the roofs. They were used as outdoor living rooms. No mingling of seed, animals, and cloth. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds, lest both the seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of the vineyard be sanctified together. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a garment that is woven of woolen and linen together. Strings to be worn in garments. Thou shalt not make. Sh thou shalt make strings in the hem at the four corners of thy cloak, wherewith thou shalt be covered. Punishment for false charge against a wife. If a man marry a wife, and afterwards hate her, and seek occasions to put her away, laying to her charge a very ill name, and say, I took this woman to wife, and going into her, I found her not a virgin. Her father and mother shall take her, and shall bring with them the tokens of her virginity to the ancients of the city that are in the gate. And the father shall say, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and because he hateth her, he layeth to her charge a very ill name, so as to say, I found not thy daughter a virgin, and behold, these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the ancients of the city. And the ancients of that shitty city shall take that man and beat him, condemning him besides an hundred sickles of silver, which he shall give to the damsel's father, because he hath defamed by a very ill name a virgin of Israel, and he shall have her to wife, and may not put her away all the days of his life. But if what he charged her with be true, and virginity be not found in the damsel, they shall cast her out of the doors of her father's house, and the men of the city shall stone her to death, and she shall die, because she hath done a wicked thing in Israel, to play the whore in her father's house, and thou shalt take away the evil out of the midst of thee. Punishment for Adultery if a man lie with another man's wife, they shall both die. That is to say, the adulterer and the adulteress, and thou shalt take away the evil out of Israel. Punishment for rape in the city. If a man have espoused a damsel that is a virgin, and someone find her in the city, and lie with her, thou shalt bring them both out of the gate of that city, and they shall be stoned, the damsel, because she cried not out, being in the city, the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, and thou <clears throat> shalt take away the evil from the midst of thee. Punishment for rape in the country. But if a man find a damsel that is betrothed in the field, and taking hold of her, lie with her, he alone shall die. The damsel shall suffer nothing, neither is she guilty of death. For as a robber riseth against his brother, and take taketh away his life, so also did the damsel suffer. She was alone in the field. She cried, and there was no man to help her. Punishment for seducing the unmarried. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, who is not espoused, and taking her, lie with her, and the matter come to judgment, he that lay with her shall give the father of the maid fifty sickles of silver, and shall have her to wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all the days of his life. Incest forbidden. No man shall take his father's wife, nor remove his covering. Chapter 23. Who may not enter the church? Before we go to that, we do happen to have chapter 23, verse 1, in eunuch. By these are meant, in the spiritual sense, such as are bearing of good works, into the church, an example, into the assembly of congregation of Israel, so as to have the privilege of an Israelite, or to be capable of any place or office among the people of God. An eunuch, whose testicles are broken or cut away, <clears throat> or yard cut off, shall not enter into the church of the Lord. Uh, Mamzer, that is to say, one born of a prostitute, shall not enter into the church of the Lord until the tenth generation. The Ammonite and the Moabite, even after the tenth generation, shall not enter into the church of the Lord forever, because they would not meet you with bread and water in the way, when you came out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor, from Mesopotamia and Syria to curse thee. And the Lord thy God would not hear Balaam, and he turned his cursing into thy blessing, because he loved thee. Thou shalt not make peace with them, and neither shalt thou seek their prosperity all the days of thy life forever. Thou shalt not abhor the Edomite, because he is thy brother, nor the Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. 
They are they that are born of them, and the third generation shall enter into the church of the Lord. When thou goest out to war against thy enemies, thou shalt keep thyself from every evil thing. Those defiled by dreams shall leave camp. If there be among you any man that is defiled by a dream by night, he shall go forth out of the camp, and shall not return. Before he be washed with water in the evening, and after sunset he will, shall return into the camp. Law of san Sanitation Thou shalt have a place without the camp, to which thou mayest go for the necessities of nature, carrying a paddle at thy girdle. And when thou sittest down, thou shalt dig round about, and with the earth that is dug up, thou shalt cover that which thou art eased of. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee, and to give up thy enemies to thee. And let thy camp be holy, and let no uncleanliness appear therein, lest he go away from thee. Escape servants. In one second. Verse 14. No uncleanliness. No uncleanness. This caution against allowing any filth in the camp was to teach them to fly the filth of sin which drives God away from the soul. Escaped servants. Thou shalt not deliver to his master the servant that is fled to thee. <clears throat> he shall dwell with thee in the place that shall please him, and shall, and shall rest in one of thy cities. Give him no trouble. Prostitution forbidden. There shall be no whore among the daughters of Israel, nor whore monker among the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not offer the hire of a strumpet, nor the price of a dog in the house of the Lord thy God, whatsoever it be that thou hast vowed, because both these are an abomination to the Lord thy God. Verse 15, to thee, an example, from among the Gentiles, the promised land was thus declared a land of liberty. Usuri, usuri forbidden. Thou shalt not lend to thy brother money to usury, nor corn, nor any other thing but to the stranger. To thy brother thou shalt lend that which he wanteth without usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the works in the land, which thou shalt go in to possess. Verse 20, to the stranger. This was a dispensation granted to his people by God, who being the Lord of all things, can give a right and title to the goods of another. Otherwise, the scripture everywhere condemns usury as a contrary to the law of God in a cry, in a cry and sin. See Exodus chapter 22, verse 25, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 36 through 37, mm, second ESD, which I can't remember what that stands for at the moment. Let me check if I can find that. I apologize. I would guess that's... Hmm. Yes, I can't quite know. Actually, looks like that might happen to be Second Esdras, as long as I am looking at that correctly. Yes, it looks like Second Esdras, which is chapter 5, verse 7, Psalm 14, verse 5, and Ezekiel, which is chapter 18, Verse 8 through 13. Vows. When thou hast made a vow to the Lord thy God, thou shalt not delay to pay it, because the Lord thy God will acquire it. And if thou delay it, shall be imputed to thee for a sin. If thou wilt not promise, thou shalt be without sin. But that which is once gone out of thy lips, thou shalt observe, and shalt do as thou hast promised the Lord thy God, and hast spoken with thy own will and with thy own mouth. Law of vineyard and farm. Going into thy neighbor's vineyard, thou mayest eat as many grapes as thou pleasest, but must carry none out with thee. If thou go into thy friend's corn, thou mayest break the ears and rub them in thy hand, but not reap them with a sickle. Chapter 24. Divorce. If a man take a wife and have her, and she find not favor in his eyes for some uncleanness, she shall write a bill of divorce, and shall give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed, and marrieth another husband, and he also hateth her, and hath given her a bill of divorce, and hath sent her out of his house, or is dead, the former husband cannot take her again to wife, because she is defiled, and is become abominable, bef abominable before the Lord, lest thou cost thy land to sin, which the Lord thy God shall give thee to possess. Chapter 20... Oh. Never mind, that's for chapter 25. I apologize. A husband to remain home 
the first year. When a man hath lately taken a wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall any public business be enjoined him. But he shall be free at home without fault, that for one year he may rejoice with his wife. Millstone, millstones not to be taken to pledge. And thou shalt not take the nether nor the upper millstone to pledge, for he hath pledged his life to thee. Kidnapping. If any man be found soliciting his brother of the children of Israel, and selling them shall take a price, he shall be put to death, and thou shalt take away the evil from the midst of thee. Leprosy. Observe diligently that thou incur not the stroke of the leprosy. But thou shalt do whatsoever the priests of the Levitical race shall teach thee, according to what I have commanded them, and fulfill thou it carefully. Remember what the Lord your God did to Mary in the way when you came out of Egypt. Pledges. <coughs> Pardon me. When thou shalt demand of thy neighbor anything that he oweth thee, thou shalt not go into his house to take away a pledge. But thou shalt stand without, and he shall bring out to thee what he hath. But if he be poor, the pledge shall not lodge with thee that night, but thou shalt restore it to him, presently before the going down of the sun, that he may sleep in his own raiment, and bless thee, and thou mayest have justice before the Lord thy God. Payment of Wages Thou shalt not refuse the hire of the needy and the poor, whether he be thy brother or stranger what that dwelleth with thee in the land and is within thy gates. But thou shalt pay him the price of his labor the same day before the going down of the sun, because he is poor, and with it maintaineth his life, lest he cry against thee to the Lord, and it be reputed to thee for a sin. No one to be punished for another sin. The father shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children for the fathers, but every one shall die for his own sin. Justice. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless. Neither shalt thou take away the widow's raiment for a pledge. Remember that thou wast a slave in Egypt, and the Lord thy God delivered thee from thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. Charity. When thou hast reaped the corn in thy field, and hast forgotten left a sheath, thou shalt not return to take it away. But thou shalt suffer the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, to take it away, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the works of thy hands. If thou hast gathered the fruit of thy olive trees, thou shalt not return to gather whatsoever remaineth on the trees, but shall leave it for the stranger, for the fatherless, and the widow. If thou make the vintage of thy vineyard, thou shalt not gather the clusters that remain, but they shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. Remember that thou also wast a bondman in Egypt, and therefore I command thee to do this thing. That was chapters 21, 22, 23, and 24 of Deuteronomy. Thank you very much for joining me. Join me next time as we read chapters 25, 26, 27, and 28 of Deuteronomy. I hope that you all have a wonderful week, and God bless.